All right. Am I here? Can you hear me? May have been shocking. Welcome, everybody. Not sure. Is this video compression go burr? That's right. I figured it'd be better than nothing. Hey, we're here. We're live. We did it. Oh, the, the, the chat's a little funky. There we go. Hey. We got first time chat from a Yale official. Wait, no, I've seen you before, Yale. This is not a first time chat. Twitch is lying to me. <laughs> we didn't visualize her from scratch for fun. No. <laughs> oh, dear. Lander XT says, wait a minute, I'm not supposed to be here. Flamel. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome. It's good to see you. Good to see Winamp still going strong. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Let me just uh, figure this out. <laughs> In Fortran, Keck W. Oh, dear. Yeah, that would be rough. I'm just using Project M. Project M is nice. Okay. Let me, uh, yeah, this is good. We're going to be doing some more compiler stuff today, so that's fun. Uh, I'm very excited for it, at least. Okie doke. Perfect. <laughs> the underscore in Lenser stands for Winamp Visualizer Developer. <laughs> Lamal. Early stream, by the way. Yeah, it is sort of an early stream. All righty. Speaking of stream, let's get uh, let's get right into it. Uh, yeah. So basically, there's a PR. Let me open that up. And uh, the PR is made by me, in case you don't know already. Uh, it's called modules. It's what we've been working on lately. And uh, let's just go over like what a module is and why we want it, right? So a module is going to be something like uh, some module.int right here, right? Let me load my editor file. There we go. <laughs> Indecent Lab says new syntax. Yes, new syntax. You're going to have another PR with the Vim one. Honestly, you're probably going to be ahead of the tree sitter one and the Emacs one because uh, this isn't a difficult grammar to make. It's just that it's not that important if it's not there. So I might, I might kind of wait a long time. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a module in intercept. A module must have the first ever thing be a module declaration, which gives a name. This name is going to be used to determine the name of the output file and the name that will then be uh, imported from another program. A program is not a module. See, there's no module declaration here. So a module may have code in it. For example, this is a declaration of zero called 69 or this is a def declaration of 69 called zero but uh what is a program oh dear what have i done so <laughs> oh mr mukami oh yeah and uh i just have a shout out to make shout out to eigen tourist for the most recent donation i very much appreciate that I uh, am looking into expanding the scope of the channel a little bit. So uh, the donations will help keep these streams coming with quality and quantity. Anyway, that's my spiel. So a module, right, can export 
a declaration and hopefully also like functions and stuff like that, which is also just a declaration, right? So functions and variables can be exported. And when they're exported, that means that the compiled file, the object file or assembly, right? Whatever target code we're targeting will expose this symbol globally rather than locally. So a static is still locally scoped in C. It's like saying static zero is equal to 69, static and zero is equal to 69, is not quite the same because a static would be local to this file, right? So an intercept, it's almost the opposite of C, where by default, C would have int zero equals 69 be equal to this, this right here right? However, in intercept, without the export, it's equivalent to static int 0 equals 69. Hopefully that makes sense. So this wouldn't be exported, or at least that's the idea eventually. I don't know if that's the current implementation, but that's that's the, how it's supposed to work. Sassy Fajita says, as it should be. Hey, yes. I'm glad you enjoy. Is that a first time chat? I don't know if I've read the name Sassy Fajita before. That sounds new. <laughs> <laughs> Rename zero to nice. Nice. We'll do it. And then in in a import module, right? You can import a module at the top of a file. You can import modules. Sassy Fajita says, yeah, hi, lol. Hey, it's good to have you. Thank you for tuning in. It's so amazing to have all of you here. I would do a group stream today, a public stream, but I want to get some things done. I think. I may just end up in the Discord very soon. <laughs> anyway, to import a module, you just use the module name that you declared, and then you import it. And then from there on, you have a, a namespaced object, basically. You can think of it like a struct with all the, with all the exported things inside of it. You could do a group stream and ban Serade from talking. <laughs> Uh, I don't know why that's funny, but it is. <laughs> we'll have a group stream with everyone except Serade. No, that'd be no fun. He's so he's so good. He provides great discussion. And he's very smart. Uh, where are we at? So yeah, by accessing foo.nice, we should get 69 returned from this program because as you should know by now, the return value of an intercept program is the last value, the last expression, the result of the last expression in the file. And this is that. So ideally, what we should do now is compile foo module, compile our program, and then link them together. And we should end up with a working program. Yeah, everyone follow? Also, I, I did things. You might be proud of me. Look at this. You see what this is? That didn't work. Oh, that's just a new shell true value. It didn't actually run the system true. Damn, how'd I do that? Shoo, <laughs> I'm a genius. That didn't work either. Uh, anyway, I we have the return value now here. Is there a way to specify, is there a utility or something that just returns the number you pass to it? Look what I did, I broke it. <laughs> That's right. But yeah, I updated my prompt and also my prompt is now available. I don't know if anyone cares, but if you go to codeberg. Uh, it's probably not codeberg.com, so may wanna not type that in. It's codeberg.org. And then in my dot files, there's now my, my shell configuration and my prompt configuration. So if you want like the, the prompt I have, it's there. Anyway, that's a thing now. Uh, 4ply exe says, is that the return value of your program or the last exit code? Mr. Mugame says exit code. Also 4ply exe says also hi. What's up 4ply? Also cool name. It's like plywood. Uh, 
Yes, it's called Echo. I don't think... Wait, can you Echo 7 and it returns 7? That doesn't return the status code 7. False utility ends with 1. Do I have false on a Linux? Hey, it returned with 1. So for 1, we have the specific error word show up. But for every other number, we have the number show up. For example, I probably have an old something lying around here. Hey, there we go. It returned 69. Zarya says, weren't you going full Linux? Uh, I, I'm making the transition. Still in it. Spain says, hey, what's up, Spain? How's it going, Spain? I don't, I've never seen your name before. What brings you in here today? Okay, yes. So we have a module called foo that defines nice to 69, and then it exports it. And then it, we have another program that imports the module foo and then returns its value. So let's try and do this. First, we're going to use intercept just to make sure it works. Okay, we have intercept. It's here. So now all we have to do... Oh god, I should never say that. So now all we have to do is feed it the file to, hey look, I've done this before, to the module that we'd like to compile, right? And it's module.int. Perfect. Because we want to compile the module. Here it is, this thing. We'd like to compile this. And we don't even have to name it. We're just going to hit enter. Source, yeah, we get a warning. Don't worry about that. This is good. And it's saying source file name does not match name of exported module. Examples temp some module that doesn't contain foo. You see the issue. So it's just warning you that this is defining a module called foo, but it's not actually called foo. So is that a mistake? That's why it's just a warning. It may be an issue. Because most of the time, if you're defining foo as a module, it should be within foo.int. That way it's easy to find the source files as a human. When you see module foo, you can go, or import foo, you can find foo.int, right? Uh, Forply <laughs> with the chat GPT answer. Uh, now she says, is the S silent? Yeah, it's just pain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm Radio. Thank you so much for the follow and fartingle. I had to say that. Uh, Mr. Mukame says, I thought there's a command called exit. I mean, yeah, it just exits the shell. Well, I hate when Go doesn't compile because there's an unused variable. Yeah, that, that won't happen. This did compile. We can see with dash V. It generated coded output file path foo.s. So it said, yes, the S is silent. It's actually pronounced Lenner. <laughs> hey, everybody, Lenner here. <laughs> so dumb. So it generates foo.s. Fantastic. If we took a look at foo.s, this is the module. You can see it's not very different from a regular assembly file, other than it's got this special section here for the module metadata. Anyway... We compile the module. Now that we've compiled the module, we can compile the not module, right? The the program. <laughs> now it says undefined reference to nice and module foo. But guess what? The compiler gives us a hint. Resolved module foo at path foo.object. That's not what we want. I have an old compilation running around. So can I ls foo? No, I, I, uh, show me, I'd have to ls grep. <laughs> Let's look for foo. I have, okay, confusingly, there isn't a foo.object. Okay, they're up here. <laughs> I was like, confusingly, there's not one here. I have all three. Yeah, that's no good. That's going to be confusing. So we're going to remove foo.o and foo.object. We don't need those. We just need the one we just generated with this, right? Foo.s. That's all we need. Uh, actually, we probably do need a mod uh, an object file. That way we can deserialize it. So we could, uh, with foo.s, compile it into an object file, but actually I'm just going to use the intercept compiler to do that by setting the uh, target to object. There we go. 
and this generates foo.object, and now uh, we can remove foo.s because I made a mistake. You can use foo.s and it will work, but you do need an object file around in order to, uh, for the intercept compiler to deserialize things currently. Because we can't really uh, read the bytes of the intercept module section out of an assembly file very well, as you might have guessed. So we have an object file, foo.object, which represents our module, much like C works. You compile it into an object file. And then we can go for our, here, and we'll just do an object file as well for the other one, the import program. And that created import module.object. And you can see we resolved module foo at path foo.object. We have a declaration nice, which is an integer. And then here's the global object file, or general object file that we produced. And then that has been converted into a cough object file. So we now have file uh, import module.object, which is an AMD64 cough object file. And then we also now have foo.object for our module. And all we have to do, it's quite simple, is then use a C compiler or a linker, really is technically all you need, but I'm gonna use a C compiler, that way I don't have to link in the system binaries myself, like libc and uh, syscalls and stuff like that. So it says, by the way, does it build the format check plugin on your system now if you set it to use Clang? Because if so, then I'd recommend that because incorrect format strings are a common bug. Coffee. <laughs> yes. But now we can feed GCC our object files. And then we can just tell it to generate uh, program.exe out of those. And you can see it takes a little bit, but it exits with code zero. And now we have uh, program.exe, which is an executable and a moment of truth. We run it and it returns 69. Hey, PogChamp. <laughs> How's that? It works. Modules. We have them, sort of. Okay, how do I... Let's look at the CMake list. What is Sorry, talking about? Now make a make file to do this. Uh, could. It'd be, it wouldn't be too difficult. I'm not going to do that because I'd have to learn make. I would use a CMake file to do that if I was going to do that. And that is something I might do if I'm people are interested. <laughs> Okay, where are we at? What did you... Where, you said... <laughs> Lennon Scholar. Going full German there. I stole your new config in Env and it doesn't like me. <laughs> do you have new shell installed? <laughs> what, what doesn't it... What do you mean it doesn't like you? Like it just error gives you a bunch of errors at the beginning? It could be a version mismatch because I have one of the newer versions of new shell. That's not right. I have like 0. 0.72. <laughs> this is just the one in my path. Don't listen to that. I have latest new shell from GitHub releases. Yeah, they change things a lot, so that could be an issue. I have it. Isn't it in the name? Here, hold on. Uh... No, the old one was for 0. 0.6. 0.60.0, 0. 0. 0. 0. but this one is for like 0. 0.72. So it says try setting the CNCXX compiler to kind of see if it builds the format check plugin, is what I meant. I see what you're saying. Uh, yeah, I think I already build Clang. I have build Clang CL, not build Clang. Okay, so. D, C make, C compiler, clang, C make, CXX compiler, clang. That should be it. I'm on 0 0.82.0, damn. But honestly, the error messages should tell you like there's just some old things in the configuration that either moved or uh, don't exist anymore. So you can either just delete or move them. That's what I had to do for like 
upgrading from 0.60 to 0.72. So I'm just going to generate a new build tree with CMake here using Clang as the C and C++ compiler, as you can see here. And uh, hopefully we're able to build the format check plugin. Uh, that way, you know, I don't have any invalid uh, format specifiers. Interesting. Yeah, I don't think it did it. Oh dear. We have a lot of conversion warnings that for some reason aren't colored. Do I have to do like pretty colors? What is this? I don't think, yeah, we have diagnostic color anyways. It's not MSVC. Well, Clang's just tripping. We always have a lot of conversion warnings. Yes, I know. Warning, unused variable, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, it doesn't seem to have built it. I could also probably tell by doing something like this. Oh dear. Yeah, we have test instantiator, we have int c, but we don't have... We have the algal suite. Yeah, we've got we've got nothing as far as that went. Why did that happen though? Let's just look into the the CMake reasons. If CMake C compiler ID equal clang, find package LLVM config. Ah, I can see the find package LLL, LLVM config being an issue. <laughs> That's right. We added this little this little ditty. So why do we need LLVM dir? What is this? What's it actually used for? dash f plugin i see because the format check plugin uses llvm yes i'm i i'm starting to understand that sucks uh <laughs> yeah that's not going to happen on my machine anytime soon uh but we did it we returned 69 we have modules there's some stuff to do though uh for example with command line arguments Zarya says, warnings? I see nothing. So it says, also because you missed it, the diags flag for Clang is fcolor diagnostics. Well, why'd you screw it up in the CMake lists? <laughs> You're the one that added color. So we're going to say, what are we saying here? How do we tell if it's GCC or Clang or what? I'm going to do this. Probably just like this. And then we give a target compile options. Uh, if it's clang, it was what? F color always? Uh, D Dimitri Maximoff Galera. <laughs> thank you so much for the follow. What a name. Lonely Zero and Estura Gola. Thank you so much for the follows. I appreciate it. So if it's clang f color always, is that one or f color dash diagnostics? Is that what it was? Diagnostics. Okay. Else we're gonna have this f diagnostics color equals always. Not some ways, always. Okay. Add a little comment saying, uh, also this could probably be a generator expression, but it uh, doesn't matter. Actually, this could definitely be a generator expression. Uh, so fix me, make this a generator expression. Other than that, 
Uh, what are we doing here? This is use color codes in the output of the compiler for readability. Okay, sure. If I'm changing it, I'm changing it. We did it. That's fantastic. What do we do now? Okay, we'd like to have like dash L or something. So if you don't know C, uh, by the way, already, that's no longer work in progress. Uh, da, 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 da. Legendary. <laughs> First time chat from Define Evil. Woo, fellow Emacs user. Yes, hello, hello. It is I. Now she always says new parser unknown command on new complete git branches. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what that means. Never configured new shell. Yeah, it's unknown, but we always. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the unknown command thing in new shell, by the way, is the. Uh, they basically just updated how they do completions. But you would have to probably look into that. You could just get rid of the git branch completions because you don't necessarily need completions, right? But yeah, that's something they're working on a lot. Define Evil says there are dozens of us. Dozens. <laughs> Not sure it says, okay, can do later then. Honestly, I didn't know there was a major changes in the recent versions of New Shell. I follow him on Twitter and stuff, but uh, I must have missed that tweet at some point. So I'll just update my config if you don't feel like doing it. Nice. You should be able to get new shell running under WSL. Might be a little tricky. Okay. Where are we at? We're going to do some... Oh, yeah. If you don't know C, this might be a little confusing. But basically, you can tell that when we compiled the program... Not that one. When we compiled the program with int C... It says, resolve module foo at path foo.object. Why would you use NuGet on WSL? I feel like there are better shells on Linux. Uh, what? NuGet. That's, that's not what we're talking about. NuGet is something else. <laughs> New shell, not NuGet. <laughs> Someone else chimed in with the correction. <laughs> oh yeah, you see it resolve module foo at path foo dot object. Currently we're just checking the current working directory, but we probably want to check more places than that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically uh in GCC you can pass dash L, which we can probably look at in their help. Maybe. We'd probably have to give a specific help because they're it's it's too much. Naturally. Ah yes. <laughs> we'd have to we'd have to uh, figure out which one of these we actually need because there's quite a bit of of output for all of them. Oh dear. <laughs> there's so many and they're all not what we need anybody know where the help for dash l is <laughs> wait what option are you looking for dash l <laughs> just want to know what they say about it but basically dash l refers to uh it will add the directory at path, add the, I guess, directory or file at path to check for, we should probably just have it be directory. I don't know, though. We can eventually have it be a file. What do you want to know about dash L? I want to see the damn help message for it. <laughs> but GCC help is so terrible. 
It's like, ah, yes, just pass in dash dash help. Oh, you get like five things and there are, <laughs> none of them are useful. A bunch of weird dump specs version. Like, okay, how do I use it? Right? And then you go, oh, I can get help on common optimizers, params, target, warnings, joint. Which one of these is just like is params? Does that mean it doesn't? Look, that's not params. It's 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 bad. I want to know about dash L. Tell me how to link things, please. But they're not interested in that. See, this is for x86 64. They just assume everyone knows how it works, which is really annoying. Anywho, dash L, basically, it's not a flag, by the way. It's, a, it's an option for sure. It says add the directory given to check for modules. That's it. For example, currently it would be as if we're calling build int c with dash l dot, just the current working directory, and we're doing that all the time, just by default. But what we'd like to do is have a bunch of extras. Uh, I'm trying to think about this. Do we just want a vector of char pointer or of string? The help message is add directory to library search path. Oh yeah, that helps. Clang has the best documentation. Add the directory given to check for modules within. I'm going to do that. It sounds like someone could read that and not have their brain blown off. Like, what the hell does that even mean? We could even just say, check for modules within the given directory. That's even better. That's even better. Check for modules within the given directory. That's so much better. I could say, like, also check for modules within the given directory, but I, th I feel like check is fine. Someone could actually understand that, conceivably. <laughs> also, I don't, I don't, is this, what does colors take? It takes auto, always blink, and never. Did not expect that. Okay. Anywho, we now have dash L. Yeah? Perfect. Uh, how, do, how are we actually going to implement this? Probably just a vector of strings or something like that, right? I mean, it's kind of sucky, but there's not really something else we could do, right? We're just going to have to have like a search paths type of thing. Right? Something like that. Something like that. And then we'll just add the search paths to the thing as we encounter them. And then whenever we are searching for a module, which is still in the main file, then all we have to do is... Oh, oh dear. Yeah. So basically, we're going to have... So we're going to have to move this into a while loop somehow. So we're going to... Okay. For every import, we append the import module name to the path, which is nothing. So we just... We, path just begins as import module name, and then we add an extension based on that. So we're basically going to say, like, for each one of these path names that it may be, then we're going to have to check uh, all the directories that it may be in until it's successful. So when we are doing this first check, 
we're going to actually have like a loop here. So in, in platform read file, we're going to have a loop, right? And then we're going to loop over the different paths that we want to do, which is going to be for each index i, j. And this is going to be within search paths or whatever. Sure. And search paths. Maybe there's a better name. Module paths? Search paths is fine. Whatever. Okay. We'd search some paths. We'd read a file. And the file we want to read is actually... Hmm, yeah. In search paths, we probably just want dot in there by default. Yeah. So we're going to do something like this. Might be slightly odd, but it's fine. So we're going to push dot to search paths by default. That way, even if none are given, we'll still search for it. Okay. And now we're going to loop over. Did I get rid of the for each? Didn't I just write this? Maybe I'm crazy. Sit down. Yeah. I'm just crazy. Probably deleted it. I am very smart. <laughs> By the way, how, did, how was the visualizer at the beginning of the stream? Crazy? I was crazy once. Then I took an arrow to the knee. <laughs> Sorry. They locked me in a room, a rubber room. I feel like these are lyrics. A rubber room with rats. Is this a germa? <laughs> Is this the rat movie? We're the rats. We're the rats. <laughs> it's definitely lyrics. I was crazy once. So basically, we're going to have a char pointer. Here's the thing. We're going to have like a string buffer, which refers to the working path. And then we're going to vector clear working path is it vector clear who knows also why is it so mad there we go is it vector clear it may not be vector clear D teams here, let's just it is vector clear. Okay, I'm not I'm not crazy. So we clear the path. We're gonna want to append to working path from and rats make me crazy. <laughs> He's still going with the lyrics. I don't know what it's from still. A uh, vector append. What do we got? What do we actually want to append? We want to append the search paths at j dot eta. Yeah, because that's a string. Okay. And then we want to vector. Yeah, so we vector append the string. We would like to vector append. It's going to be a bit odd, but uh, dercep, which is just going to equal a slash for now. We're not going to do anything crazy. So we have der separator, working path. We want to do der separator, and then we want to append. OK, 
Okay, and even this may be better as its own thing. This is a bit messy, don't worry about it. So we have search path, append search path, the search path, plus a dir separator. And then for each of our extensions, this is another thing. So we're going to have a, uh, yeah. We're just going to do span, I guess. Also, I'm realizing I can use literal span here. Uh, da 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 da. Sassy Fajita, thank you so much for the follow. And Define Evil, I appreciate it. Okay, Vector Span. This is going to be extensions to try. Vector Push. Okay, and then this is going to move there. And it's going to be, well, I guess it doesn't have to. We can have this still be like that. Yeah, that'll be fine. That'll be fine. Because then we can just vector push the uh, the span. These aren't spans, but we can do literal span. Ah, uh, we can't do literal span. I see the issue now. Can I do as span? No. So it may be easier to just move this. Don't worry about it. If you if uh, if that didn't track. Okay, so now we have first extension dot object, which is actually going to turn into vector push. We're pushing to the end, so it should be fine. And we're gonna push literal span dot object to extensions to try. Then dot O. This one is going to be the other way around. Beautiful. After all of this, we are going to have to vector delete extensions to try. And search path and working path. Cool. Anything else? Anything else? No, it should be good. Okay. Mr. Wugame says, Coding in C is so different for me. Every malloc feels bad and slow. In EG JavaScript, I just throw arrays around like it's nothing. Yeah, in C, you start to understand, like, oh, I can kind of do whatever I want, and it'll still be faster than Python. <laughs> I mean, you can't, but it's really easy to make slow C. But at the same time, it's, it's, it's not a big deal. This is path. Where are we getting path from? Path. Construct output path. Path. This is path. Where is it defined? Am I crazy? Okay, string buffer path. Which says, find those in there. What is this meant to be? What path? Add extension based on target. So this is the output file path, okay. I don't feel like we should be using that still. We should be using output file path. Why is path being used down here? Did I do a bad? Has a bad been done? Okay, I created another path. Fantastic. Gotta love shadowing. So this path, what is this path meant to be? <laughs> Local? <laughs> Can you, can you at least tell me where this, where it's from? Uh, 
Okay, Schrodinger says, is there anything special about an object file, or is it just binary data? The only thing special about an object file is the format that it's in. It is just binary data. But the the format lets you know how to how to decode that. Schrodinger, thank you so much for the follow. Uh, trying to wrap my brain around the linking process. Ah, it's simpler than you think. You'll get it quick. Every feel is binary data if you feel like it. I don't know what that means, Mr. Mugame. Yeah, sure. It says one of many in a long line of this kind of copy pasta. Oh. Zool says latest copy pasta meme going around. Odd. <laughs> Mr. Mugame says my brain not working too hot. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> cool off. Chill. No idea where it's from. Gotcha. Okay, so now what do we want to do? We're looping over our paths. So the idea is that path is our module name. Plus what? Yeah, it's going to be... I think we can get rid of path at this point, actually. I don't think we're going to actually need it anymore. So don't worry about this. And don't worry about this. And don't worry about this. <laughs> right? That's fine. We uh, we need to worry about that. There we go. Jeebus. So for every import, then we don't need to build this extensions to try for every import. We can definitely move this up a level along with search paths. Yeah. So that's extensions to try now. That's that done. And then we just have to move this to after this bit. We can comment this out like we did above. OK. So now we have extensions to try. We have search paths. Where are we at? Geek Nerd Man says, hey guys. What's up, Geek Nerd Man? Great to have you. Kit Carson 3 says, hello there. What's going on? We're building a compiler. Hello, hello. Currently implementing this dash L option. Or at least trying to get it to a place where we can do that. Okay, so we have not a module object. Success is false. And then we, uh, if not success, we want to do this thing here then. Or we assert success. <laughs> Geek Nerdman says building compiler too. Hey, glad to have you. Now Shiro says it's from 1996. This is the oldest of that copy pasta you could find. It's old. Get Carson, what kind of language will this compiler compile? A compiled language. <laughs> it's intercept. It's already it's already a compiler. This is a module import this is a module declaration with an exported global variable and then like uh, if you want to see like rule 110 we have that so we have like uh, arbitrary bit with types we have type inference based on uh, expressions we have while loops we have function calls we have cffi we have uh, little if expressions, so ifs can actually return values, as you can see here. We have bit shifting and stuff like that. We have external linkage, because we're calling butchar. How about that? Okay, now let's write some C. So we have search path. Now we have search path slash, and then uh, to do 
when we do this, if path doesn't already start at, uh, doesn't already end with Duracep. Okay, so add the dir separator. So now let's say someone does dash l uh, lib, like libs slash my lib. Then that means that they want lib slash my lib to do only do this if that doesn't already end with dir. Oh, dir sep. Geek Nerdman says, for what is this module for? <laughs> this one? For testing purposes, it defines nice to 69. Uh, yes. And now we should append the different... Yeah, okay, so now we want to append the module name. And after we've done this, we now have something like lib slash my lib slash foo. And at this point, what we want to do is actually, yeah, so vector pen, search path, import module name. Oh, I went too far, okay. And basically, we now want to try .o and .object and blah, 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 all the ones from extension to try. Oh, dear. I might just be able to do a for each uh, extension. And then extension. So what we're going to do now, see, this is when when everything falls into place. This is when we clear working path. Well, no. Well, yeah, this is what we'll do for now, but there's an optimization that can be had here. To do only clear back to search path plus dir set plus module name. We don't have to redo this every time. And in, in fact, we could just use search path in that case. So yeah, we'll get there. So now we want to do extension. Why are you mad? Number reference type span pointer. Oh, I got to do that. Zool says, hopefully they make the recommendation algorithm good for... Oh, clips. I don't care. Coffee drinker, thank you so much for the follow. And Gyokin and Zool and Arcdirect and Schrodinger and Evil Waveforms. Thank you so much for the follows. I appreciate it. I cannot believe we are over 700 followers at this point. Thank you so much for being a part of the community. Be sure to check out the Discord if you have not already. There's lots of stuff going on. And ooh, look at this. Indecent Labs already is working on while the stream has been going on syntax highlighting for modules in Vim. Look at how beautiful that is. He's in fact beat me. I haven't even done it for Emacs or Tree Sitter yet. I'll get there. Thanks, Indecent. You're the best. Feel free to make a PR to this PR or just wait till we merge it and make that a PR. Either way. Uh, but yeah, 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 yeah. So only blah, 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 blah. Now we append the extension, but we want to append to working path. And we want to append to working path the search path as well. Because search path has slash libs my lib slash foo. And then we want to turn that into slash foo dot o, which means we append the extension. At this point, we should actually be able to see things. So let's just do this. Yeah. Looking for module blah at blah. And then we'll do something like this. Uh, yeah.
Is that Twitch chat in a terminal? No, it's an Emacs. So it's actually just in another frame on my other monitor. This is Emacs baby. I can prove it by putting up a fireplace in its place. <laughs> you like it? You like the fireplace? It's a fun little fireplace. There you go. That's Emacs. <laughs> so it says, for some reason, I'm getting horrible flashbacks from that name. <laughs> <laughs> Man's put the chat on fire. I'm burning you all. <laughs> Evil streamer burns Twitch chat alive. <laughs> I can see the headlines now. Uh, GNU Max Coin. GNU Emax Coin. Thank you so much for the follow. Great name. Shh, local, don't tell me. I don't want to know. <laughs> I can't even think about it. I have it in OBS where it hides the numbers now. Uh, yeah. So now we're at the point where we got to rebuild. 700 viewers. Oh, <laughs> uh, if that's true, I'm going to... That would make... That would blow my mind. I don't think that's true, though. No, wait. 12k viewers. No, wait. No, oh, no, no, no. You can't do this to me, man. Now, now you're making me have to look at the real number. <laughs> uh, so we'll build the compiler. And uh, I think we can just do a regular build. I honestly don't know how many people are watching it. I don't think I need to. <laughs> what happened? Path doesn't exist. Resolve module bleh, at path blue. So I don't have the path that I've resolved it. Ooh, yeah, so something interesting here is we don't actually check if we've set it or not, so we're just going to hit this assert no matter what. I just want to get all these printouts, mate. So this resolved module thing will go up in here once we do the comparison. Or once we, like, open the file and uh, succeed. So this is just going to be commented out for now, because we're not even going to hit it. It's dead code. It's after an assert. Local says, no, wait, we're back to 12k. <laughs> Molly says, it's 69. <laughs> it's overflowed to 420. <laughs> Lamau. Code stank, is this compiler faster than Rust yet? I Like Cargo or Rust C? It's faster than Cargo by a million times, yeah. <laughs> That's not very impressive, though. Where are y'all seeing these numbers? All I see is 6k. No, Rotbjorn, don't do it to me. Code stank, Rotbjorn, thank you so much for the follows. <laughs> uh, it's so good. So now we need to do the one where we import the module. Perfect. Looking for module at dot slash foo dot object. Looking for module foo at dot slash foo dot o. Hey, 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 that's what we wanted. Schrodinger's Twitch view count. Lamau. Can we import now? Oh yeah, we can import. We can import all day. Okay, so now we need to set module object based on trying to open the thing. But it's not path.data, it's working path.data. Whoa, I broke it. Don't worry about that. So what happened there is the underscore is actually just when I tap my alt key, but with shift, right? So shift alt for me actually inserts an underscore because I have a split keyboard. So when I type fast, if I do shift alt and then P, it actually moves lines like this. So I can like drag lines around, but uh, that kind of makes it unfortunate for that quick typing. Why is it mad about working path? And then it's and success. So now we want to say if success break, right? That's kind of all we need to do. Then we need to do that. I'm a professional. So we have this loop, 
for this for each, and then we have this loop for this for each. So all we have to do should be if success break. Yeah, and then what we can do is assert success and then do this print up here. Because we still have working path, which hasn't been altered. Okay, let's just think about this. Module object equals platform read file. Write to success as an out param. If success break, success break, in which case we'll be here, and which will assert success, which will be true. Unless it's false, in which case we never broke out. We just got all the way to the end. And okay, 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 okay. Which split keyboard? Great question. It's the Hotdoc 76 V2. I'll show you my via config uh, just so you can get an idea for its layout. It's actually two different boards, but here's here it is in via. You can see I even have unused keys that I don't know what to do with. Because I don't press them, and I don't need more buttons. But yeah, this is this is it. So this is my left hand and this is my right. The hot dog <laughs> V69 2. That's that's pretty close. That is that is close. Hot docs 76 V2. It's up here as well. It's a it's a good keyboard and I uh, I compile the firmware myself. I have my own uh I wrote the code myself for the key maps and everything for the firmware. In Decent Labs, check number 73 at intercept repo. Hey, I'm assuming we have a PR. We've got a PR. Add module syntax. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, In Decent Labs. We now have import and module declaration and an export. And then an int module name. Maybe include semicolon at end of line. Yeah, th there may be semicolons at the end of any of these lines any amount of semicolons. Molly the Man says, can you see the help me in the Discord when I try to compile, I get this. Absolutely. Uh, this looks perfect. Special, special, special function. Why is module name a function? I do, I am curious about that. Is that just for uh, colors in Decent Labs? I'm, I'm presuming that's just to get it to be highlighted the right color. I don't think that will mess with things as far as Vim goes. What do we have? We got stuff going on. There's people in the Discord. Adrian and someone named Z. I'm in streamer mode, so it won't tell me. Thank you so much, Adrian and Z. It's great to have you. I should set my uh, display name in this server. Can I do that so that it actually shows? Let me just do that really quick. Edit server profile. Streamer mode enabled. Let me do it anyway. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> ah. The keybind is right. What is it? Oh, it didn't take me to it. I have to find it. Why Discord? Why? I don't even see the place to toggle streamer mode. Keybinds are disabled while this panel is visible. Does anybody know how to toggle streamer mode? There's got to be something. Ah, whatever. I'll do it later. I'll do it later. Hey, Kit Carson is here. Welcome, Kit Carson. Okay, we have helped me. That's that's that. I'll be there. Uh, be more verbose. Uh, what is this? I can't even see this. What font is this? Okay, I'm yelling at you for your font, Mr. Mugame, or not Mr. Mugame, Molly the Man. There's too many M's. Molly the Man, what font is this? Are you using a bitmap font? This is unacceptable. It's 2023. Execinfo.h, no file or directory. Are you, what platform are you on? Because this is in platform.h. I don't think it's something we're doing. It's in platform.c. It's in exec info if not defined Win32. Are you on Mac? Pretty sure Windows doesn't have exec info. Well, yeah, but he might be on a Mac. Molly, if you're on a Mac, it makes a lot of sense. 
because we don't we don't have anyone on a Mac to test with. So you'd be the first one that actually gets it working. Molly the man says, I use Windows. Well, your Windows is broken because Win32 isn't defined. <laughs> so, so you're compiling with non-Windows compiler. Okay, Molly? I don't know what you did, but if you're on Windows, this is what we include. <laughs> it's very different from, from the error you're getting. Uh, see, so you're using SigWin, buddy. That's not Windows. That's SigWin. It's a different platform. It's not Windows. <laughs> SigWin is basic. It acts as Linux. So you're gonna have you're gonna have troubles there. I would recommend a native Windows compiler like MinGW. You could also use Clang, or you could also use MSVC if you uh, don't like yourself. And pretty soon that's going to be deprecated. Cool. But yeah, join, uh, join the Discord. It's a ton of fun. I'm going to go ahead and say Sigwin is not supported, but we should probably add that to the readme. Yeah. Listen, Molly the Man, if you like Sigwin a lot, I'm not telling you you can't use it. I'm telling you that I don't know. I don't have Sigwin. I don't, I'm not going to make it work on Sigwin because I, I don't have that time or the ability to test, right? So I, I, I would love to get this working, but ideally you just wouldn't use Sigwin. But if you, Molly the Man says, I don't like it. I can use MinGW. Yeah, that's what I use. I use MinGW. Uh, dump specs. Not dump specs. Ah. That's the wrong one. It's dump machine. I always forget. There we go. See, I'm on MinGW32, the 64-bit version. And literally, like, the old... You can also use msys 2 MinGW, but it's going to be harder because of paths and stuff. I recommend just native Windows stuff, if you can. All of you could see that, right? Okay, I just had a panic. Like, <laughs> were you just looking at the Emacs that whole time? I was, I was, I was uh, about to be very scared. Okay, so looking for module blah at blah. We shouldn't even need this anymore. Rotbjorn says, "Imagine using two dashes for long flags." <laughs> Lamau. Now that's an inside joke. Uh, what is the one we just ran? We want to run import module dash v dash t object after we build. Is this close? This is very close. Hey, it worked. Chat. It just worked. Cool. Uh, yeah. Has that ever happened before? Holy shit. Like, uh, I don't, I don't know what to do now. Chat, it worked. I did, I compiled it and then it worked. That was like the first try. Well, and there we go. Moldy the man says make test. Time to pack up and go home. <laughs> Sorry, it says. Uh, by the way, since we're deprecating MSVC support, can I finally start using type of yes and statement expressions? Mm. Also nice. So type of I'm fine with. It's a C23 feature. A compiler that doesn't support it is is not supporting the C language. So that's that's not good. We obviously can use C language features, so type of is fine. It is C23, but... Uh, this is a new compiler targeting C11 would be stupid because it's 2023. So I think that using like C23 language features is fine. Statement expressions, I don't think are a language feature yet, even in proposed. Are they proposed? I think they're just a compiler. Extension through GNU. Yeah. I'm pretty sure this is the only definition of statement expressions that's actually, like, standardized at all. And it's just GNU. 
Clang also has them, but I don't think... Ah, here's the problem. I don't want to lock into just GCC and Clang. Clang and GCC both support them, and I don't think there are too many other relevant compilers, candidly. There aren't yet, but there may be in five years that we don't want to lock ourselves into. Because it's possible, like, ah, oh, Clang stops being updated, and then, oh, GCC is updated more, but then, oh, they... they it's it's just not worked on anymore and then there's just proprietary compilers only that's totally possible they might not support this stuff not that i want that world but i i do see that as a possibility sadly i think type of is fine here's the thing with statement expressions i i like statement expressions and they should be a thing in c but they're not a thing in c which sucks The main reason why I want statement expression... Oh, I they will help a lot. Why do you want them, though? I'm curious to know. So we free module object dot data. Why do we do that? What is module object? It's a string. Okay, that's what we do. So search path and working path, we have freed. Oh, we don't actually need working path. That's right. We can get rid of this now because this is an optimization, remember? So we can remember the length of this uh here we're just gonna do this module path link colon extension uh no null colon how do i say not without extension that seems verbose whatever verbosity never bothered me Okay, so search path dot size. We really got some issues going on. Uh, so now we just need to say vec. No, uh, search path dot size is equal to module path length without extension. And then we just append the extension to the search path. And then we use the search path to search. Oh dear. Uh, opposite of con is sin. Yes, it is. That's I like that. <laughs> Cosine and sine, right? If you're Spanishing. I should have known that, since the Mia. Uh, sorry, the result of this is that a macro that e.g. loops over something or does something else that requires a statement, like creating temporary variables, especially united because of the blah, 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 cannot return a value, e.g. it's impossible to write foo equals vector find if in a macro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I know what you mean, because vector find if needs to define an, a temporary, but then in C, like a for loop or anything like that, can't return an expression. So being able to do that is nice. How, okay, just, if we just did the type of upgrades, how much, I mean, that would get us very far as far as like usability, right? That means that every single for each no longer needs the type in it, right? Which would be like, this would just move to for each extension in extensions to try instead of span extension, extension, <laughs> So it says it would help, sure. Okay, now the question is, are statement expressions hard to implement if for a C compiler? Vector find if will still be horrible. Yeah. Sorry, it says no. Do you want to elaborate on that? Like it's it's really just easy. It's like, it's not an ambiguous grammar or something like that that makes it difficult to deal with or requires like an ambiguous AST node, nothing like that. You literally just emit a block and take the last thing and make that the return value. It's what we're already doing with blocks and intercept. Right, right, right. I just, yeah. I just want to make sure it's not difficult as far as a compiler implementer's point of view, because then it's likely that if there's a new C compiler, it will support statement expressions because they're nice. But yeah, where are we at? I think we're good. It's it's working. 
Phantasmo. So now the question is, can we move foo.object and specify a new one? So now every time we get dash L, we need to actually do something about it. Uh, so where's where are we handling dash CC, for example? We're handling it here. And, oh dear, what is happening? So uh, maybe colors would be an easier one to steal. It's a little simpler. Okay, I'll sift dash CC. Perfect. Okay, colors is no longer colors. It's going to be dash L. No, we're not doing the starts with thing. Expected directory path after dash L. It's not legacy, says, are you attempting to make your own C compiler? Uh, not right now. It's not like something I'm actively working on, but it is something that's in... I, I kind of plan to do that in Intercept. That way, eventually, <laughs> Intercept compile itself, but not by self-hosting in the same language it's written in, which causes all sorts of issues. Rod Bjorn says, controversial topic. Oh god, someone brought up Zig. Someone brought up Zig. Everyone panic. 2319. 2319. So it says, also the thing is, pretty sure I've seen statement expressions being used in glibc, so if you want to compile glibc, you need to support them. Well, yeah, that makes sense, because it's GNU libc, but... Yeah. Okay, so now we don't need to do any sorts of string compares -ness. So argv at i is going to be yes. So argv at i is going to be a string. We're gonna want to make a string create for this, and we're gonna do that to push it into a vector called search paths. We don't need all this. And I don't think we're gonna do like much validation on the search path. I don't think it really matters because if the user defines, like puts its user input, but I mean, at what point is it the user's fault? And at what point is it our fault, right? So I'm going to copy foo.object somewhere else, or move it, I guess, would be better. Where should I move foo.object? Let's move it into examples temp. So now we don't have foo.object here. And if I tried to compile, like I was before, it says could not find module description for module foo. That's not good. So what we can now do is pass in example slash temp. Oh, oh. <laughs> it worked, chat. It actually worked, chat. Something I wrote worked. <laughs> That's insane. Ooh, there's some great discussion. Code Stanks is my B-Zig illegal in this channel. <laughs> it's not. Everyone has opinions, though. Okay, where are we at? Zig CC supports compiling C. I didn't know that. I did not know that. It, uh, sassy feed. It causes issues to compile a language in itself. That sounds annoying. Sassy feed says, no, that's pretty normal for non-interpreted languages, actually. That may be in reference to something else. But yes, it does cause issues because bootstrapping is a whole thing. Clang and GCC are written in C++. Yes, they are. The more popular the language, the less of a problem there is. Mm. Yes and no. As in, it's pretty normal for a non-interpreted language to be implemented in itself is what I meant. Ah, that makes more sense. Yeah, it's, it's normal. It's just annoying because it causes 
you have to be, yeah. It's just not as easy to develop. It's just my complaint. I'm I'm fine with writing an intercept compiler in intercept. It's just not going to be the like the compiler, if that makes sense. I'm not going to give up the C compiler, the compiler for intercept written in C, and then go. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm not using that. I'm just going to use intercept now. But I would write an intercept compiler in intercept as well as have an intercept compiler in C. Dash dash aluminium. That's right. You got to figure out what that one does for yourself. Everyone has a C, C++ compiler, so writing your new C, C++ compiler in C, C++ is super safe. Yep, that's sort of. You, could, you don't have to rely on your own implementation, but there's no other intercept compiler. So if the only intercept compiler is, an inter, is written in intercept, if there's a bug in intercept, there's a bug in the compiler, but then the compiler it generates will also have that bug. It's just, it's a mess. It's a real mess. T diagrams all over the place. Other compilers will compile it, then so will yours. Exactly, exactly. So it gave us eyes at, oh my god, it worked. We have Boggers from Indecent Labs. Thank you. It is Boggers, Boggers. Rot Bjorn says, looking forward to the day that I self-host a, comp a compiler and fumble the booch... Oh, what did that say? And fumble the bootstrap compiler, so I have to start again from scratch. That's right. But for your own brand new language, the problems are it's constantly changing and you're the sole compiler. If you self-host, everyone has to use your compiler and you need to ensure it's either bootstrappable from a different source language or you have a trustworthy binaries distributed for all the platforms you want to support until you replace them. Exactly. That was actually a good explanation. It wasn't poor. Now she says, I've done this twice. Yep, where you ruin a bootstrapping setup. All I'm seeing is explanations for why computers were a mistake. <laughs> we should have stopped at Steam Tech Age. Tech, Steam Tech Age? Oh, we should have stopped at like Steam Engines. I get what you're saying now. Ah, so better protection against scorched earth situation law. Yeah. If you lose all executables of the compiler, you are effed, right? Yep, that's right, Mr. Mugume. Well, all compilers have bugs. You can always go back to an earlier version if something goes wrong. Ha! Yeah, sure. Bootstrapping is only a nightmare if you try to do it too early. Right. That's true. I'm thinking I'll end up with C Lacy and Lacy when I do bootstrapping. C Lacy being the original C compiler for as long as I think it's needed, and Lacy becomes the self hosted one. Yeah. IMO the bootstrapping makes sense when you're not planning on any on adding any more features. Yeah, sure. That would definitely change things because all of a sudden you have a fixed uh goal. And if you have a fixed goal, you can get to the point where it's like, ah, oh, it's done. But a compiler is not a fixed goal. It's an ever-growing growth. It never goes away. So it's definitely a, a different situation, in my opinion, just on or at least this compiler. Sven2025, you're two years ahead of us, says, Hi, Land. Hi, Sven. How's it going? Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoy. Sassy Fajita says, Thanks for the explanations, everyone. Going to go grab coffee. Be right back. Hey, have fun, Sassy. Uh, now sure, I think stable O.X or 1.x versions are the best points to start bootstrapping. Uh, yeah. What do you think about design pattern in programmer in general? Are you a bot? What is that? What? I don't mean to be mean. I'm literally asking. What do you think about design pattern in programmer? What? <laughs> well, uh, I don't want anything inside me. That I that I don't choose to put in there. So as long as it's a uh, it's consent, <laughs> you know what I mean. There's consent involved. <laughs> then it then, yeah, it can go in me. Uh, <laughs> his brain is just like mine. <laughs> Lamau. What's the higher density planet in the solar system? Well, higher, higher than what? Any planet in the solar system is a higher density because you didn't say higher than what. The higher density planet in the solar system? Pluto. <laughs> it's higher than zero. Nashiora says, anytime you want to use a new feature, create a new bootstrap to compile. Oh yeah, just do that. Yeah, that's so easy. At this point, we can rewrite Intercept in itself. Eh, I don't think so. I mean, design patterns in programming. I've been, Carson, <laughs> I've been counter-trolled. 
uh, design patterns in programming. I don't know what you're asking. What, how do I feel about them? I feel like designing things is important. What I, what are you? A- I'm not sure what you're asking. You should design programs. <laughs> you shouldn't just like have them. Lens loves the factory pattern. <laughs> uh, I'm just, I'm kind of, I don't know what to do now because it worked. I've never had something work this easily. I guess I just commit it and I'm done. Oh, uh, Lord. PKJT, Kit Carson, Prom TTV, hash define, a less a, 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 I don't know what this name is. Ali Sopfern, Brain Stack Overflow, and Coding is Weird. Thank you so much for the follows. I appreciate it so much. We're going to use our maggot porcelain, or git porcelain, called maggot, to do some commits. Main.c, we now have vector.h, t-u-v, that's fine. It's not ideal, but it's fine. This stuff is temporary, but it's here for now. Brain Stack Overflow says, hello. Hello, Brain. Thank you so much for tuning in. Okay. Why is this? Uh, Nashua says, compiler and C that compiles intercept 1.0, compiler and intercept 1.0, compiles intercept 1.0 to 3.0, compiler and intercept. Th- yeah, yeah, yeah. You You just made a T diagram, basically. You're exactly right local but that's that's what i don't like because i just want to write a new feature and then compile it and have it work i don't want to like write a new feature so that i can have so that i can use that new feature to implement the new feature and then like it's too much it's too much brain stack overflow your code is so clean is this c yes this is c now shiora says design patterns are also just things all programmers use yes I agree. Design focusing on design patterns is an OOP thing, I think. But like design patterns are used by all programmers. It's just it's not thought of explicitly. It is thought of, just not like, oh, I'm gonna choose a design pattern, so I'm gonna do this. It's like it people just do it. So it says, yeah, that's pretty much what I meant. That's what I figured. But OOP people are the ones that are like, what's your design pattern? I'm using this one. It's like, ah, I don't care. Use it just write code, please. Molly the man, how do you use MinGW but MinGW is not sus supported? MinGW is supported. I'm confused. MinGW is a native GCC, a native Windows GCC compiler. Minimalist GNU for Windows. So uh that's that's definitely doable. MinGW, we don't have backtraces supported. So like, uh, if you try and do a backtrace and you're on MinGW, we can't do it because MinGW compiler cannot generate PDB debug info. I almost just exploded. <laughs> when API requires PDB debug info, which the MinGW compiler cannot currently generate, you can try and use Clang to generate like CodeView8 debug info and then use some stupid thing to convert CodeView8 debug info into pdb debug info but you don't want to do that i promise just use linux for backtraces or like ms you know me clang if you use clang cl or clang you'll get backtraces and it'll be nice do you mean dpp design pattern oriented people (laughs) you down with dpp yeah you know me uh now she says we're all saying the same thing that's right Molly the man says, look at the help me. Yeah, how do I turn it off? Turn what off? What? I'll look at the help me. GMOS. Failed to read file for instruction selection. You're not in the proper working directory, is my guess. That's all. So currently there's, there's, a, there's a bit of a thing going on where instruction selection, right, has a file dot icell, which is actually its own entire domain-specific language for instruction selection, right? 
Now the issue with that is the compiler needs to find this at runtime currently. That's not the plan forever. But currently, that's how things work. The plan eventually is that once a backend has its instruction selection like down, like used, it no longer has to be given one at runtime. It still can be with a command line flag. That's what this is how it will work. It still can be with a command line flag, and you can pass in your own instruction selection file. But the actual instruction selection file will be embedded into the compiler itself for most of the included backends. That way it won't have to find things at runtime. So all you have to do is be in the working directory of the source. Wherever the source code for intercept is, you need that. And, and in fact, technically, all you need is like source slash code gen slash x86 64 slash dot icel, whatever this thing is, right? This is what you need, this path here. So if you want to hack it to work in another, uh, in another directory, just copy this file at this path into the directory where you're trying to compile things. Do I need to add this to the environment? How can I compile my int file without this? Well, you can't compile it without an instruction selection. You need the patterns. These patterns are required to convert general machine IR into lowered machine IR. But uh, you're ju you just need this file path, which it tells you if you would... Uh, I know it's, a, it's an error message, but it does say failed to read file at blah, blah, blah for instruction selection. You just need that file there. And Decent Lab says maybe simlink it. Absolutely, totally doable. You could copy it, you could simlink it. You just need this path uh, to point to this file so that you can actually uh, read it at runtime. Rob Bjorn says do it without it and get a nice size optimized binary. I mean, the uh, I don't think this 100 bytes is going to be an issue or whatever. Because if we get this down to just the text, I mean, even if it's a kilobyte of just text, that's that's not a problem. And how big is how big is it currently? Uh, if we did ls build. It's currently 905 kilobytes, including one extra kilobyte is not gonna is not gonna matter. Rapion says, I meant generating zero machine code. What? Intercept parser config semver generator factory. Ah, yes. Okay, so it worked. I can't believe it worked. I'm back to committing. I was answering a question. That's right. Yes, and I did it. I did it. It's been done. If you need more help, let me know. But that file does need to exist. He means if you can't select instructions to output, you generate zero instructions, and that's very size optimized. Lamau. I see what he's saying. I see now. Thank you, Local, for the translation. I would not have gotten that. That makes so much more sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just generate no code. Give you a big old fat empty file for the output. Cool. We did a we did a feature. Modules. Implement search paths with dash L. Command line option. Is that is that good? Yeah. Ah, oh, yes, I'll fix this too. CMake 50 character limit? Oh, hell no. Pretty sure it starts at 72. There you go. Yeah, 68. There you go. Not bad, eh? And it's not a limit. It still goes. It just says... It just makes it red. Because if you're actually get logging... I don't think you care about long commit messages. That's kind of the point of Git logging. 
uh, CMake emit proper diagnostics color option. Uh, technically, it's a flag. Uh, it's an option or a flag. Emit proper diagnostics color option flag for Clang. Before we just used the GCC one. Never mind, 50 is suggested max length by th some people. If anyone is like micromanaging your commit messages, they need to get other shit to do. <laughs> this, that's my opinion. Nobody should ever care about like your commit message as long as it's reasonable. Like if you follow the conventions of like, oh, they put the, the, the like category in brackets and then they do a message about what they did. If you follow that general thing, nobody's nobody should ever care. Because if you do like git log n8, you never like, oh man, what I really wish is that this commit message was shorter. <laughs> Even if you're on like a short one, it's like it's really not a big deal. Even if you do one line, not online, one line. Even if you do one line, it's like they start with a very specific hash so you can tell what's what. I don't know. It doesn't bother me. You could have like a 300 long commit message, I think, as long as it's needed and relevant. As long as it's not like, ha ha, this is a long commit message, long commit message, yes, go burr, ha ha, yet. Like that's not okay, right? Because it's not taking the project uh, seriously, but... Yeah, I don't. It doesn't have to be too serious. I'm pretty sure Gober has been said multiple times in the Git logs. Okay, so that's committed. That's committed. Uh, I think I did it. It's incredible. Vim is guilt tripping me when they start highlighting excess characters as red in my commit messages. <laughs> yeah, they do that. They do that. Uh, what, 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 uh, maybe I'll go update the grammar for Emacs mode. Uh, what do I have to do? I'm not going to get too crazy with it. I'm just going to have like them be keywords, even though they're not technically keywords. Not technically keywords whatever so yeah import export and module can all be just as keywords that's fine assurance says visual studio pops up a big stop putting so many characters in your commit message thing that covers the commit message button <laughs> feels okay man uh okay Barak, Peter Sendai, and Yarek, thank you so much for the follows. I appreciate it. Okay, so we have import, export, and module. And that should honestly be all we need. Cool. There we go. Highlighting. We need one more viewer quick. Someone create a burner. <laughs> I don't even want to know how many there are if we need one more. Uh, integer byte void, import export module. So that's done. Cool. Uh, now time to go for the tree sitter one. It's going to be a little more involved because we have to change a grammar, but you know. This will actually be more accurate, so that's nice. So I think we're just going to start with like creating a module declaration rule. I don't even need that. So module declaration. <laughs> and DJ Labs says foo.nice minus one viewers right now. And now she says, oh shit, too many burners, go back. 
Lamau. <laughs> There's like a coordination happening in chat. The lens are coup. <laughs> so if we see module followed by an identifier. That's a module declaration. Yeah, that's I, I think that's actually it. I was like, wait, is that too simple? But I think that's that's that is it. And then I can actually check the grammar here. We should have it. Yeah, so we have module declarations, literally just module identifier. We have import declaration, very, very complicated grammar here. Import identifier. Module import. Import identifier. Cool. And then we have the preamble, which is an optional module declaration. Should I make the preamble its own rule? See, the problem is source file needs to be repeat. Or at least it, it's, it's the only one that can be. Because it needs to match the empty string. It's the only rule that can match the empty string, in fact. So... <laughs> okay, yeah, 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 yeah. By the way, if, uh, if everybody's interested in this, be sure to join the Discord. We have a lovely community of people. Local, Serraid, Mr. Mugame, Dapster, uh, Dwer. We have got so many people in here that are geniuses. They'll help you out, and they're awesome, so be sure to keep it there. Nice. <laughs> uh, I can't even think about it. I can't even think about it right now. I'll stress out. So we have some grammar. Oh yeah, but join the Discord. It's a ton of fun. You can get help with code. You can uh, just show off stuff that you're working on or get help. Uh, we have linguistics, so if you like conlangs, do that. We play video games sometimes. Be sure and talk about them. Be sure to, to check all this out. It's a lot of fun. Local is local in VC. That's right. Nashior is local. I, I forget to say that. <laughs> uh choice okay so basically if we have a preamble how would this work how would this work so what if i just did a sequence of optional that should be still match the empty string optional and then this would be the optional preamble. Uh, what is this going to be? Preamble is going to match. Uh, I don't know if I want that optional. Let's just let's not uh, do this abstraction yet. Let's do this directly. So. The preamble is going to be a sequence, an optional sequence, which may contain, optionally, a module declaration, and may contain, optionally, any amount of module imports. Okay, I think that makes sense. <laughs> Trees that are confusing new viewers, Lamau. Uh, where are we at? What's the best game pre twenty tens? I, I wouldn't know. I'm not that old. Indecent Labs says Valve once. I mean, Half Life Two. I still play, and it's fifteen years later. So, take with that what you will. Where are we at? In V's and it was obnoxious, verbatim, Valve ones. Hi, Compiler and JS. What's up, Campbell? Camp Belly Hamster? So good to have you. Hey, Camp Belly Hamster, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, this is a uh, 
not in JavaScript. Currently, we're working on tree sitter because we have this language, which we are trying to compile. And for syntax highlighting, we're using something called tree sitter. And uh, as you can see, module and export are not highlighted properly. So we're working on building the grammar to actually uh, to actually parse that. Uh, just for tree setter, just for syntax highlighting. So we do an optional module declaration followed by any amount of module imports. This is probably going to break things. Let's go try it. Uh, okay, I'm pretty sure I have to do npx, yeah, this whole thing. If you don't know, this might look confusing, but npx is just for node modules. It's for JavaScript. Tree setter generate is actually going to generate a the C code for a parser that will parse this grammar. And then it'll also tell us if there's any errors. And then CMake will build, will generate and build a build tree for CMake, which basically says, hey, that C compiler it just generated, or that C parser it just generated, compile that. And then we are going to try and highlight a, a syntax test for intercept. <coughs> Uh, which we can add module foo import bar like that and see if it compiles. And uh, one thing I'm probably gonna have to do by hand is repeat semicolons. So there may be lots of semicolons. And then same with an import. And then comma here, comma here. Okay. Uh, yeah, so Campbelli, <laughs> Pascal, oh God. So yeah, compiler is written in C uh, for a language called intercept. And currently we're working on the JavaScript tree sitter grammar. Hopefully that's not too confusing. Indecent Lab says, I've played Half-Life 1 yesterday. Hey. Nashio says, uh, Demon Souls, Portals, Spyro, Ratchet, and Clank. That's a very good answer. What about Super Mario 64? On the N64. That was a fun game. I liked a lot Hom series anyway until IV, until 4. Nashio, in other news, guess who wrote a bunch of untested code and isn't surprised to get another seg fault? Hey, probably local. <laughs> Rotbeard, the moment I started getting seg faults when writing TypeScript, I gave up internally. Lamau. Okay, unresolved conflict for symbol sequence module identifier semicolon possible interpretations module module identifier. So this is saying we could either get a module declaration with or without semicolons. So what do you actually want us to uh, take? Because this is just saying ah, uh, there's there's more stuff in the module declaration that's part of this uh, semicolon? Or is the semicolon actually part of something else? Because when we repeat choice, then we may get a module import. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is simple because, is that at the end of module declaration? That is, that's unfortunate. So hopefully, what if we just get rid of those? And then this should be a, yeah, repeat choice type of thing, just like below. Uh, out of conflict for these rules, source file. Ah, uh, it's not sure if we should get one semicolon in a row or two now. Okay, this sucks. Let's think about this. So problem is, okay, what if I just don't do semicolons? Does it actually compile? It does, but it's not going to actually work properly because the semicolons will mess it up. As you can see, it's not highlighted. Also, it, it skipped a line, but that's fine. So yeah, let's, let's do something like this just to simplify things as well. That way it stops going off the top of the screen. Indecent Labs a C moment. 
Now show us his local wrote an AST printer and it seg faulted immediately. Hey, I've done that. Sorry, Hom equals heroes of might and magic. Ah, I see. Now show SM64 is good too. It definitely is. So yeah, you can see we're not we're not highlighting these things properly. They should be keywords, basically. Once we go into queries, highlights, and add them to the keywords list, that is. I forget how this works exactly. I should just be able to do scheme mode. Yeah, there we go. Uh, module import export. Let's try that. See what it see what it gets. Okay, query error, invalid node type, export. Oh, I haven't uh, actually added export to the grammar, so it's saying it doesn't know what that node is. Uh, to do that, I'm just going to add export here as an optional. Okay, there we go. It looks like we may be getting a module uh, declaration. To do so, we're gonna switch to parse in our tree sitter command line. And that'll spit out a parse tree for the file. And we can go ahead and take a look at the top and see we have a module declaration with a name. Hooray, it worked. And then we just have two random identifiers that we're not sure what they are, but that's actually our import bar. Okay. And this doesn't work because of semicolons. So module declaration may have a semicolon after it. Can I just do that here? How, that sh This is going to break things because it's not going to be, well, yeah. So now two semicolons in a row, it doesn't know what to do. Doesn't know if it should do repeat one or three. So it's saying, should we actually match this repeat because it, it can match a semicolon or should we match this optional, which can match a semicolon? And the answer is we actually want we only want to repeat semicolons if we find this stuff, but the, see, this has to go here in the grammar no matter what. Raptor, I'm a big fan of the Thief games, AoE 2, and the first three Splinter Cell games. Sly Cooper, Jet Moto. Hey, very good. Very good, very good. Beans Mate, thank you so much for the follow, and 20 pixels. Thank you, thank you. It's so good to have you. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to say hi. And join the Discord if you feel like being part of an awesome community of people. Uh, Shadow of the Colossus. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one. PS2 vibes. Uh, so really, the issue becomes if we have a bunch of... So if there's no module imports... Yeah, okay. I think I know what to do now. It's going to be kind of unconventional. Here's the thing. If there's a module import with the import keyword, then there can be any amount of semicolons before it. Yeah. Which means there can be any amount of semicolons. So just a semicolon still needs to work, though. Which if it's just a semicolon, this will match. Okay, yes. Damn. <laughs> Module import repeat. What's it saying now? Doesn't know whether to do module import repeat of semicolon or source file repeat to this one. What do you mean? So it doesn't want to do look ahead. I could add a conflict for these two rules, but I don't want to do that. So how could I resolve this? It's amazing how much just uh, semicolons uh, cause a push and put an issue onto the grammar, you know what I mean? With ambiguity. 
Darn, darn, darn. It can be so annoying. And Decent Lab says, do not forget about todo.md, just reminding. I'm actually, I'm thinking about deleting that file entirely. I think it's at a good point where we've done most of the stuff in it, and there's kind of just technical debt in there now. Just reminding, evil semicolons. <laughs> yes, semicolons are evil, I agree. Okay, so we can get an optional module declaration. What if I didn't do this thing? still mad about the same thing. Okay. But I simplified it. That's good. So we can have an optional module declaration, or we can repeat a bunch of module imports. So you think this would be fine, because if we don't get in, see, the problem is just the order of things. I don't think this is actually going to parse properly. Yeah, see, we have a module declaration parsed properly, but then not the import because of semicolons. Okay, well. We're going to have to put a precedence on one of these, but this may work. Add a conflict for these rules, source file. What else? I don't even know what this will do, to be honest. I don't think this will work. I guess it would switch it into GLR parsing, which uh, that may work then, yeah. See, but the, this isn't the best way to do this. For sure. Hey, we got a module import, though. So we are parsing it properly now, but we're doing a stupid GLR parsing, which we don't want to do. So let's try and not do the GLR parser, even though we know it will work. It will work. Local says semicolons master race. Uh, sure, sure. So if we just repeat module import, that's not an issue because we get the import keyword. Yeah. Cool, but then we don't parse it properly. So before every module import, there can be any amount of semicolons. That's like totally a thing. And then here's another confusing thing. Comments are also a thing. I wonder if I'm just working too hard at this to represent something I don't need to represent. The compiler can enforce that it's not valid unless it's at the top of the file, but we don't need to enforce that, I don't think, from the syntax highlighter, syntax highlighting grammar. We just need to parse it. Yes, that makes much more sense. It's not ideal because they're not expressions, but neither are macros or comments, and we still use those here. So what gives? It's a parser. It is not a compiler. It's not even a parser for a compiler. It's a parser for humans. Hey, it works. Okay. So now if I syntax highlight our little test, we should see module and import be highlighted properly. Hey, it works. It works. And the semicolons are too. Look at us. Cool. And now we can... Uh, do, 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 do. What did I do? So with CMake, I've built libtreesitter int.dll and treesitter works by using treesitter config, I'm pretty sure. And looking in parser directories. So parser directories, we have deprogrammed tree sitter, so we'll get tree sitter int, that's fine. And then tree sitter bin, which is in dot tree sitter, is where I have to copy things. Oh, I didn't copy that correctly. That's not gonna work. I'm gonna rename this. Can I rename this? Rename to dot dll. Sorry about that. 
Yeah, actually I should have, yeah, look at that. It's missing there. So now I should just be able to copy build slash libtree sitter int dot dll into nvap data lib yeah tree sitter bin libtree sitter int dot dll. Oh, I can't do that because Emacs currently has this dll loaded, so that's not going to go well because it's using it to show me this int file, for example. Okay, well, other than that, since I can't update it on my machine right now, I guess I could close Emacs and do it, but that's a whole thing. I think I, I effectively I did it. I'm gonna leave that open so I remember, but uh, yeah, that's good. I'm just gonna commit this as a get the committed, get the committed. What do we have? We have conflicts. Removing a comma, that's fine. We have module declarations and imports and exports. We have the queries, which are module import, export, blah, blah, blah. We have the generated files, which got updated. There were probably like 40,000 lines changed or something because they're auto-generated. Oh, and then I should change the package JSON version number. It's going to be 333. Three, three. Let's do it. How fun is that? 333. Three, three. Rob Bjorn's trailing comma master race. <laughs> Optional comma is the best. Three dot three dot three. This is just going to be Modules, Phantasmo. A A. Never let me do that again. So we push it to main, and now y'all can update your grammars if you must. Another thing we should probably do is update the int ts mode. Because it now has new keywords, which is module, import, and export. Not really keywords, but that's fine. Uh huh. So, three new keywords. That should be all we actually want to syntax highlight differently. And then they're just keywords. So, this vector. Unwrapping should do it, the trick on this list. Yeah, we convert it to a, uh, a vector because that's what it's required in scheme, but that's fine. This is good. Indent doesn't have to change. Base mode, fine. Comments didn't change. We're good. That's good. Coolio. What is that if statement hell? Where were we looking? Were we looking at syntax test? This? Is this what you're referring to? Indecent Lab says, okay, I'm going to bed. It was a good stream. I'm also thinking about compilation mode for my programming language. Eee, exciting. Indecent Labs, thank you so much for tuning in. We're definitely going to get your PR merged as soon as possible here. Uh, as, um, yeah, it's going to work. Uh, I should just be able to do it, but I want to make sure I have my local commits pushed first. That way I can pull without a merge commit. Okay. I'm in the wrong spot, so that's not going to help me. Do you plan on implementing switch statement as well? Yes, but this, it's here. Hold on. Let me, I'll, I'll explain more. So I haven't changed anything major. I should just be able to do that. So we'll do int mode. So we'll do editor emacs. And this is going to do module keywords. Okay, just making that commit now. This is written in Elixir, right? Lamau. Uh, 
Snoxes, you were asking about, do you plan on implementing switch as well? This is actually just a specific syntax highlighting case where, by the way, I'm now realizing I haven't done uh, arbitrary integers or number prefixes yet, but I'll get there in the tree sitter grammar. I'll get there. This is written in Elixir, right? It is not written in Elixir. Uh, this is intercept. This is a language I made up. And this if statement is actually an if statement that returns a value. So we're basically assigning new state to any one of these branches based on which way we go. And the reason this is here is because as a syntax highlighting test, this is actually really good to do with precedence and everything because it has like unary operators and grouped expressions and binary operators and binary operators of unary and then it also has the uh the no parentheses around the condition right it's just if blah 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 so making sure that it captures a binary expression as a condition and not just if bits blah 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 stuff like that but yeah this is just for a syntax test but this is actually in the rule 110 code, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Not even. We actually just do the assignment within each branch of the if in rule 110 itself. But it doesn't matter. This, is, uh, this was just a broken syntax highlighting. Because it was, it was having lots of trouble with seeing if, uh, seeing an else in the proper place. But it's fixed now. And macros. Beautiful, beautiful macros. I love macros. What lang did you use for Lexer, etc.? The compiler itself is written from scratch in C. Here's the main file where we are resolving module imports and looking up things. This is what we implemented today. What was I doing? I was doing local commits. Uh, in TS mode... So see, it is. That's based. <laughs> Have you ever tried Lex Yak? Uh, I'm not a dark magic uh, wizard. I don't actually shoot lightning bolts out of my fingertips, so I've I've never been able to actually figure those out. Editor Emacs, uh, tree sitter, modules. Untracked files. Do I have anything untracked that I like to track? No. Cool. So I can now push my changes. Wait for it to refresh here. Can rebase and merge Indecent Labs PR that he made during the stream. What a poggers champ. And then we can fetch a uh, rebase local commits, not rebase local commits. That's not what I want to do. Don't do that. Okay. We're going to uh, not fetch. We're going to merge with pull. We're going to pull into modules from origin modules. We're going to try a fast forward. Can you fast forward me into the future, please? It did. Hey, PogChamps. Thank you, Indecent Labs, for your contributions. Uh, but Emacs was still first. <laughs> uh. Okay. Uh, that's, that is that. I think I'm nearly there. This is probably uh, winding down towards the end of the stream, just so everybody knows. I'm trying to think, uh, modules, what else do we actually need? I think they're actually just ready to merge. I implemented this warning. I did some bug fixing with cough. Cough now works. We have 73 merged. Towards the end of the stream. So we've got another two hours left, Lamau. No, I, I actually have... I have stuff to do later today. But I figured it'd be a good early morning stream. Look at what we did today. We did so much. I'm proud of us. 
And it actually works. Can you believe that, chat? So yeah, let's uh, just make sure everything works for sure. We can compile our compiler, that's good. Now let's use the compiler to... Uh, yeah, let's do that. So let's do some module.int. And dash v dash t object, right? And that should compile to foo.object, beautiful. And then I should just be able to do something very similar, but with the import module one. So we've just compiled some module, which is just the foo module, which exports nice as 69. Then we have import module, which we can reload. That's, that's getting better. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The int ts mode still doesn't know about them because I haven't updated my DLL. But yeah, so this is import module.int. It just imports foo and then returns foo.nice, which should be 69, as you know. So we can just... Uh, File that, and you can see that it resolved the module foo at path dot slash foo dot object. Very cool. Uh, there's a declaration nice. That's what it resolved. And then this is the generic object file dump. So this is like the object file format that I made up. Uh, it's not a binary file format. It's only a in memory file format. So it uses like vectors and stuff, not uh, serializable structs. But that's not a problem because. It's, uh, that's, it's only ever used in memory. We don't ever have to save these because we actually save them as different sorts of object files. So if I go to like the generic object.c, you can see like as cough x86-64, so we can actually generate a generic object file into a cough file, which is what we're doing here. Anyways, that gives us import module.object, which is an object file, cough object file with all sorts of stuff. You can do object dump dash, uh, you can do object dump on it if that's your sort of thing, like DRT to see the uh, symbol table and disassembly. You can see the uh, main of the program, which returns nice after moving it into racks, and all the symbols where we have nice, which is. Uh, yeah, as you can see, section zero FL, uh, where is it? So section, this should be the index of the section it's to do with, didn't do H. Dash H to object dump gives you these. So yeah, cycle two would be dot data. So you can see nice is expected to be in the dot data of an object file elsewhere. And in fact, if we do this to foo.object, you can see that we actually have nice, which is in section two, which is dot data, but we also have the intercept module section. Anyway, we can now use uh, something like GCC, or really we could use LD, but uh, just so we can link in the system binaries and stuff like libc, we're gonna use GCC and then just link c dot object. This is the same test one as earlier, but we just link together foo.object and import module.object into an executable after which we get an executable and we can now for example uh, disassemble main in program.exe and you can see it returns nice and of course we can run and it returns 69 pogchamp that's exactly what we want how about that? Are you using LLVM for emitting native code? No, I am not. We do have an LLVM backend, so you can generate LLVM, but uh, LLVM IR in textual format, I'm pretty sure. As you can see here, I don't have the editing mode right now, but yeah, as you can see, this is uh, some LLVM IR that we have generated. It does work. Here's main, for example, and here's, uh, yeah, there's all sorts of stuff. I think this was actually generated by, uh, yeah, from test.c to just to test out, but this LLVM IR we can generate. To emit native code, I actually wrote the assembler myself, and it's in 
target generic object. And basically, it's just, I mean, it's just an assembler, so it's not too bad, but it's like, oh, you want to emit a immediate to register instruction. Well, that's for machine, M code immediate to reg, machine code for an immediate to reg instruction, then you pass in the instruction. And if it's IMOL, then we say, ah, how do we do that? Well, on x86-64, there's all these different register sizes, so we have to deal with the register size and the immediate size. But basically, we just encode that. And I just did that using the Intel manual, the software developer's manual, because it has everything you may ever need. Did you know and or add, compare, and sub all share the same opcode? Isn't that fun? They can, at least. There's also versions of and or add, compare, and sub that don't share the same opcode, but most of the immediate to reg ones do. They just use a different extension, opcode extension within the modern M bit. But don't worry about that. Modern M byte, not bit. But yeah, I just wrote an assembler, if you're curious. That's how we do machine code generate, uh, native code generation. I wrote an x86-64 assembler. It's not too bad. It's only 2,000 lines. 3,000 lines? How much is it now? Yeah, 2,700. For, for an entire assembler, it's not bad. The LLVM backend, I'm kind of curious how big that is. I didn't write it, so I don't know. It's only 700 lines. It's a little simpler. But to be fair, it's basically assembly in that it's just kind of uh, textual, not binary formatting and stuff like that. It's still pretty high level, basically. But yeah, that's where we're at. So you wrote everything from scratch. Yes, now you know. <laughs> that's kind of the, the, the meme around, around me. Oh, you're, writing, <laughs> you're making something. Did you do it yourself? It's, uh, yes. But yeah, I have a text editor, I have an OS, I have this compiler I started work, I started, but and now it's all of ours. And we have so many more projects in the works. It's all, it's, it's going well. But yeah, everything's from scratch. That's kind of how we do things. Like my OS has an entire standard library, C++ standard library from scratch and a C library, and a user space, and a kernel, and a bootloader, and yeah, I just wrote everything myself. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a great way to do things, but it does work. Uh, but yeah, that's where we're at. There. Nice. Nice, nice. Snoxus says, damn, good work. Thank you, thank you. I really appreciate that. Snoxus says, this is bytecode? Uh, no. I don't, I'm not sure what we were looking at. If you're talking about this object dump output, this is x86-64 assembly. The LLVM stuff that we were looking at could have been also what you're talking about. This is LLVM IR. It's not bytecode, but it's uh, basically Clang can uh, compile this into things. Hopefully that makes any amount of sense. Uh, what else do we have? Mr. Mugame, are there good testing frameworks for compilers, or do I, am I obligated by law to write my own in Algol? <laughs> yeah, just use an, uh, use the Algol suite. It'll, uh, just write your own, you know, I'm sure it'll be fine. Oh, it's dash, not underscore. Of course. Nice, yes. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Oh, it's in the wrong. It's got the same issue as the uh, as the thing. Instruction selection broke it. But the C test one works, so don't worry about that. Snoxus says no. You already answered me about the bytecode stuff. Nice, nice. I never remember. Oh, but yeah, the Algol suite's slightly outdated. We we've been using the C test suite basically. Just because it's easier to test multiple backends with, with this suite, it's easy to just add another one like this. Uh, yeah, this should work. Oh, Chris, it's no wonder you struggle with mental health, lol. Writing everything from scratch is also my dream, but it's so huge, it's hard to even start XD. Hey, that's what she said. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, you could say that. I'd say the thing that helps me the most with my mental health is doing these things, but everyone's different. This is really good. 96% test fast. We're doing well. It seems like this is an error in the assembler I wrote. And the this is expected. It's been there. It's been failing forever. It's... Uh, why is just... Oh yeah, just a declaration is failing because there's some semantics. I, this is just a reminder that I there's something I haven't implemented in the language, which is basically that if you have just a declaration, it should actually return 69. It should return the stored value so that you can do like uh, my 69 or whatever is assigned to 69 as a, right? You should be able to do nested declarations like this. You shouldn't ever do it if you're writing good code, but there's no reason that this expression should return void. It'd kind of be useful if you could do something like that. And then if that also means that you could have an if expression return like a declaration, right? Like this, and then have like else 69. This is kind of cursed, but you could probably do something like this with that uh, syntax, which you should never do, but you know, I don't want to stop people. But yeah, this should return 69. Currently it just says 420, so it always fails. Rob Bjorn says, what's behind the idea of using algol for test running? It's fun. You can't, uh, you, you gotta admit, algol's fun. It's new. It's different. So it says, are we looking at that one again? Yes, we were looking at that one again. I got confused. But yeah, this is the algol test runner. I don't have the mode loaded right now because I'm changing my Emacs config, but it'll be there eventually. But yeah, basically it's just, uh, this is algol, baby. Thanks to Serade for how clean all this code is and nice, by the way. Uh, da, da, da. Mr. Mugame says, LLVMIR is like the ancient languages there. You needed the Rosetta Stone, which is Clang, to know how stuff works because the documentation is pointing a big middle finger at you. <laughs> That's pretty accurate about LLVM docs, yeah. Uh... Cool. Yeah, I think that's all the questions. Apophis, thank you so much for the follow. Little Jiao K Little Little Jia Little Jiao Kek W, thank you so much for the follow. Gi Shadow H Mendoza 2001. And Yes Monkey and Yarmolenko and Tico. Oh my god, there's so many. Oh my god. Okay. Oxidant prone new seven s uh New user, new 77 user, Tico, Yarmolenko, Yes Monkey, Yes, Jaden2391. Thank you so much for the follows. I appreciate it. Nice. Normally, I'd, uh, I, <laughs> it's, it's, I like the YouTube link. I appreciate it. When I see links, I like panic and I'm like, I've got my hovering over the ban. I'm like, <sighs> but it was fine. <laughs> John Blow moment. Yes, exactly. I don't want to get uh, this video copyright stricken once it's up on YouTube, so I'm not going to watch it on stream, but I will watch that video. And I'll put it in the description. Uh, I can just go to Scratch and put it there for now. Get out of here. But yeah, this is probably as good a time as any. Snock says it's not DMCA-able. It doesn't have to be. DMCA isn't the only problem. YouTube also just hates duplicates. And uh, they really don't like me, I'm pretty sure, because of my long videos. They're like, eh, you... <laughs> like, they're very strict with their rules. New song dropped, copyright stricken, disturbed by YouTube. <laughs> the Mao. Ugh. Anyways, thank you everybody so much for watching. This has been incredible. Be sure to join the Discord if you haven't already. It's a lovely community of people we have. And uh, all robots and computers must shut the hell up. I will never speak to you. <laughs> Lamau. 
but yeah, the Discord's a great place. You can get hope. How you? You can get help on code. You can uh, just talk about anything programming related. You can get code review and say, "Hey, how's my code?" Or, "Hey, check out this thing I made." Talk about linguistics, conlangs, video games. Because yes, we create conlangs around here. Local is working on one called Coscan. It's very interesting, and I very much like the font that it has. Tlightly is my conlang. It's old. It's for tree people, and the font is ugly still working on it but uh you know we're getting there anyways thanks yeah be sure to check out the discord it's a great wonderful little community of people if you're interested in programming <laughs> discord tells me i need to play pay for nitro first because of some bug you yeah no 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 never you don't need to pay for nitro the chaos lab thank you so much for the follow i appreciate it gee shadow does tries to do a command uh we don't have any bots here let me just uh see if i can here it should be somewhere let me get it for you don't worry unless somebody else is quicker i'm on my way be sure to check out oh not that where am i there we go that one twitch bot and intercept when actually that's possible soon that is actually possible soon. That's going to be cool. We just need to return structs from functions in Sys5. That's kind of major. IT tells me I joined over a 100 servers already, so I need to pay. Oh, Lamau. The Chaos Lib says, I have like 10 people on my Discord like to keep it personal. I have, yeah, the one server. <laughs> I, I just like you guys. This community is awesome. That's all I need. I've got to start being careful how much cost skin I actually share because the goal is that's something a player is supposed to figure out and I'd love to see how people try to reconstruct the language from what exists in the game. That's true. I think I don't think it's going to be too bad because nobody is going to like find the Lenser Discord. The people who are playing your game won't know that you were here. You know what I mean? Unless you tell them. Ooh, we have a nice a nice message. Uh, this kind of poses a problem for constantly posting in a public Discord mentioned in an archived video. <laughs> Lamau. Honestly, that just makes it more mysterious. Because, like, if you point people to this video and say, like, yeah, here's the most information on Coscan that's available. Because you could go through the Discord and delete uh, the PDFs if you don't want to share them. That's totally fine. It's your content. And uh, anyone who did share them would actually be doing illegally so because there is no license that you provided with those documents and they are therefore owned by you entirely. So you could just uh, copyright strike anyone that tries to do anything with Coscan that is not your game or your community. So if somebody tries to make exposed and like uploads the PDF, you could sue them. Anyway, don't worry about that. That's not uh, going to happen because people aren't generally that malicious. M... I almost read that as Emacs. MC, MC Squared says, I haven't seen your stream before. Love compilers, so giving you the fastest follow. Hey, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I love compilers too. I'm glad, I'm glad you're here. I cannot believe we're at almost 750 followers. That's insane. That's insanity. Chat. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for being you. Oh, it's 750. Snoxus49 was the 750th follower. Thank you so much, Snoxus. MCMC2, thank you so much for the follow. Quick Soap as well. You guys are awesome. I appreciate it so much. Where was I? Where was I? Haven't seen a stream before. Been coding for decades. Basic 6502, 68000, C, C, Java. Oh no. Java from C. Why would you step backwards like that? And all sorts of JavaScript pearls. Save me. Took it off my resume, etc. <laughs> the Chaos Lab says, code my own IDEs. I mean, my text editor, I did write it myself in C, and it does have syntax highlighting and structural. Uh, it will have structural editing very soon. The TTNF, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate it. This is an incredible hype train we got going on right now. Key Shadow says, thanks for the link. Snox says, did you ever heard about B-Flang? I've heard of it. It's mixed up with it's mixed up C sharp with C and Rust. That sounds horrifying. Too many keywords. Snox says, no garbage collector. I don't mind garbage collectors. 
I I mind writing garbage collectors. Writing garbage collectors is like pain, but uh, languages with them aren't that bad unless you're doing real time operations or uh, game stuff. I'd uh, like to. Not sure if this is true. The Chaos Lab, I like to write parsers too. Been using my own XML parser for two decades. Hey, that's PogChamp. The Chaos Lab, Rust is what I want to pick up more. I'm sorry about that. Not sure if this is a limo. Yeah, we can keep it for scavenger hunt purposes. 10% <laughs> of whom have been watching this whole time. <laughs> yeah, all the people that buy the game are actually just <laughs> lens reviewers anyway. So they already know the language. Rotbjorn says, it's my hobby being myself, actually. Hey, that's Pog. Rotbjorn, that's a good hobby. Not sure, when will we see compiler streams, but in light? Uh, I almost did one the other, a uh, few weeks ago. Uh, it's really, it's just going to take a commitment from me because it crashes. You know what I mean? So I have to be, like, on top of it. And it means that I can't work on the compiler because I don't have, like, auto-completion or formatting or easily jump between files it's going to be like let's write a simple one file c program and work on it in light at least that's where the text editor is at right now i would love to be able to put like another three months into it and full time and just be like it's actually a text editor now and an ide and everything's written but it's it's just the basis of everything right now it's not it's not ready but it's actually it's going well I mind when people forget the garbage collector exists. Yeah, if you don't think about it, it's a it's a big problem. You should still be mindful of them. Exactly, exactly. The Davros one. I've seen you around before, but it's been a while. Rust can be nice, but takes a lot of getting used to. I'm also basic, blah blah blah. No Java though, thankfully. A hey, Davros. Sensibly. <laughs> My garbage collection is an exit zero at the end of the program. Hey, that's right. Make the OS do it for you. That's the GigaChad way. 10% of the followers was what I meant, but good point. I can exploit your fans. <laughs> the Chaos Lab. It is a good hobby. Rutby, I recommend it. A friend of mine coded Blitz Basic. We both wrote our own 68k assembler IDEs as a friendly competition. That's awesome. MCMC Squared. What other Twitch streamers work on compilers? Soding does compilers on occasion. Strogger's been working on a compiler for a few years now. I don't know of other compiler streamers. There's not many of us, it's true. It's kind of a niche. You can be in one, though. Uh, Klutzy Wall, Nasimore, Two Based, Splash Man, thank you so much for the follows. This is incredible. Q4UX, Q4UX, Cucks. I don't know how to say that, but thank you so much. This is incredible. I cannot believe we are at 755 followers just on Twitch. On YouTube, by the way, in case you are not aware. Uh, here, let me let me just do this. If you go to youtube.com slash L-E-N-S-R, then you will be redirected to my channel where you can subscribe and see all of the streams I have ever done on this compiler and not on this compiler. I've done OS stuff. Uh, shorts are just like Twitch clips. I, I hate making them and I don't like them, but I do it because YouTube really forces you to if they want your their algorithm to push you at all anywho this stream will be up on this channel very soon uh by the end of today so be sure to check that out uh anyway yeah be sure to check out the youtube that's somewhere i would appreciate you guys following as well just in case you can't catch the streams live but if you prefer twitch to stay here Hey, uh, what else? I'm I'm falling behind. There's so many. My one pre-assembled code as you entered it. Nice. Your 68,000 was Amiga, I guess. Yeah, Amiga. I see Davros, and I just think the creator of the Daleks. Yes, <laughs> that is all it. That is all it makes me think of. Time Lords have cool names. Davros says the big Twitch compiler person is Jonathan Blow. I guess. Uh, yeah. I also watch, there's, uh, Raphael Lubia does work on the Jai compiler from time to time. I watch him. Raphael Luba? I don't know. I'd have to look it up exactly. Uh, da -da -da. Writing one in OCaml. I should start streaming. <laughs> I can do lay streams. Lens, you gotta make me stream. Local, stream, do it. That's a good idea, though. I'd love to see lay streams. Work on lay. 
Does your language implement the one trillion mistake, aka null? I don't know what that means. Does you language implement null? Uh, I don't I don't know what that means. Null is just zero. So I have a virtual machine and language I've written and used for gaming related projects, object control and etc. It's simple but effective. Nice. I was gonna write a virtual stream on a, a stream, a one-off stream coming up here just for fun. So it says garbage collection. Sure, that's a common thing. And see, we collect garbage all the time. <laughs> It's just the freeing of the garbage. That's the problem. That's right. That's right. Sorry, it has it down. Nashiora says, yeet. What did Davros do? Yes, that's a reference. Davros is in Daleks. I see. Do you only put VODs on YouTube? Any specific YouTube videos? Laie, we've been over this, Lamau. That's right. I keep forgetting. I'm sorry. Laie? My version of local streaming is grabbing my camera and hitting a local stream to take photos of native fish. Interesting. Go take photos of fish. I'm sure they look cool. Fish are crazy, man. I hate the water. Lawyer? Okay, so, uh, yes. Basically, just say lawyer in a Boston accent. That's how you pronounce it. Uh, I love the garbage collection. Sure, that's a common thing. And see, we collect garbage all the time. <laughs> Any specific YouTube videos? Uh, yeah, there are. There are, there's not many right now, but there, there are more in the works. My computer isn't good enough to edit videos, so it just crashes if I try and run like DaVinci Resolve. And uh, when it doesn't crash, the files get corrupted. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I would love to make YouTube specific videos for YouTube, but I, I cannot. I, I'm working on saving up for, you know, getting a computer upgrade here, but Things are expensive. Time is time. Rob Bjorn says, The invention of null references is called the billion dollar mistake. Hmm. Chaos Lab says, Just love them. Clever little things. Figured out they like pools where insects drink. Crazy. Nashiora says, Not quite, but better. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Just edit them with FFmpeg. FFmpeg. Yeah. Shaking my head. Skill issue. <laughs> Yeah, I'll just use the command line to edit the videos. That'll work. That'll work great. All right. Hey, SSSH2001. Thank you so much for the follow. You're probably one year older than me. Uh, but yeah, check out the YouTube. Be sure to do that thing. There is a link to donate down in the description in the about section on Twitch. Uh, don't feel like you have to. All of my content will be free forever for everyone. So don't feel like you have to donate. If you have the extra money, if you are feeling extra generous, donate and I will shout you out on stream. For example, our latest donator is Eigentourist. Thank you. Thank you for Eigentourist. And we now have a monthly donator for the first time ever. They are anonymous, but I will, uh, I still will shout them out and say thank you to them because I appreciate it. And uh, anytime, just let me know who you are, and I will shout out your nickname. Because I don't want to dox you. Eigentourist left a message. Thanks for being here. This is amazing education. Compiler design is my big knowledge gap, and it's great to find people who know this much about it. Thank you, Eigentourist. I appreciate it. I'm so happy you have decided to donate. Oh my god, no! Did you not read it? There's. It says don't donate large amounts. No. Somebody has just donated $50. Incredibly. That is insanity. Thank you so much. It's, uh, it's, there's no, there's no username in the message, which is, which is the instructions if you want to shout out. Define large. Uh. <laughs> SSSA, SSSH2001 says, I cannot donate from my region. That's okay. You don't, don't feel like you have to. I appreciate you just as much for being here. Nashiora says, okay, so it was you then. This makes sense with the name that, I, that, that, that showed up. Thank you so much, Local, for the giant donation. Oh my God. That's actually going to help so much. That actually will... Uh, it is. It is really awesome. Don't feel like you have to do that. Even just $1, $5, that is 
plenty for a donation. If we get enough people doing that, then nobody has to lose large amounts. And it's all just, you know, it all just builds up and we have this awesome community that uh, all supports each other. Every donation will go right back into the stream. It's, uh, it's its own business, basically. So, yes, I very much appreciate it. This is awesome. And uh, that's actually, like, that's huge progress towards the computer upgrade, actually. Like, you basically just bought RAM for me, <laughs> right? If you want to think about it. That is a large donation, though. That's incredible. Don't feel like anyone has to do that much ever. That's, that's insanity. Thank you so much, Local. I appreciate it. And uh, I hope we get to... We get to do amazing things as we have been doing. The Chaos Lab says, could be half a stick of RAM in the new PC you build. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It literally is. It literally is. Rapion says, finally, he can buy a faster proprietary C compiler like it's 1990. Yeah, I need Borland, guys. I gotta pay. <laughs> I gotta I gotta get Turbo Pascal going. Please. <laughs> Local says lose large amounts. I've spent like 2k on e-girls in the past few months, so uh, this is money much more well-placed. Do you want like feet pics? I'll give you feet pics. <laughs> Sorry, it says 2k and 50 now. <laughs> That's right, lens is the best e-girl. <laughs> huh? <laughs> I'm not a feet guy, but I can resell them. Hey, that's right. Lenser feet, black market lenser feet picks. <laughs> Those probably got that, that quality, you know what I mean? That stamp of approval. It's basically a Supreme sticker at that point. <laughs> also, you can't fool us. I'm not a feet guy. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I love the R slash only feet. R slash lens feet. Yeah, yeah. That's like the... <laughs> that's the Drake meme. That's the Drake meme. Like, nah, nah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, local, so much. I very much appreciate that. That's insanity. So, yeah. Uh, local has taken the new... The new victor's position of donators and is now the top donator of all time but yeah thank you so much to everybody this is incredible i cannot believe that just uh happened this is actually it's like maybe in just a month or two I may have the new computer upgrade now that's yeah that's so huge so huge thank you this is incredible yoan dw isaac dynamo thank you so much for the follows i appreciate it a ton the Chaos Lab says, how cool. I agree how cool. Local is cool. Local is like uh, the coolest. <laughs> well, I've not done coding for two weeks. Finally, I'm back. Just arrived. <laughs> uh, don't let the door hit you on the way in. <laughs> I've not done much programming for two months, so I'm going to do some of that. Fog champ. I love to hear that. I love to see programming being done. Hey, and thank you. Who? Oh, we got a server boost. Pog champ. I don't know who this is. It's G. Thank you so much, G. From L. I very much appreciate it. This is incredible. That actually means we'll upkeep our level two, and that means oh, that means that we will actually keep our file size upload limit and our animated gifs, which I can't use because I don't have nitro. But you know, if you have nitro, you can use them animated gifs. We got we got lots of them. Where are they? Not GIFs, uh, emotes. Look at all these. Look at all the L, L, L. <laughs> There's good ones. Be sure to, thank you for the for the boost. That's incredible. Uh, should be good. Okay, local. I try not to be super possessive in my disposable income. I like supporting people who deserve it. Oh, thank you. Uh, you're very generous. I appreciate it. Most people are like, mine! <laughs> Been coding alongside the Coppinger. I don't know who that is. That sounds cool, Chaos Lab. Isaac Dynamo says, GG. <laughs> yeah, good game. It's over. The Chaos Lab. He lives in the same city as me and a good friend. Nice having ambient company when coding. That's really cool. That's nice you get somebody physically that you can talk to about this stuff. Actually, Jif has pronounced Scythe. 
<laughs> yeah, that's that's true. I forgot. Skytzar says, sure. So I'd suggest adding role icons, but we barely have any roles to begin with, lol. He's a Twitch coding streamer, just streaming. What is, uh, uh, what are role icons? <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> we'll have to talk about that. We'll have to talk about that af after the stream. I do want to, that sounds cool. Role icons. Local can have a role icon. Local can have a role icon because you wear pink now. Can I do that? So it says, I'll show you later. Bless. That's amazing. Oh, pog champ. Can we get a pog in chat? Alex Danilik Devil says, I got my first job today. That's amazing, Alex. Thank you so much for the follow. I'm so happy you got your first job. That's poggers. You're going to do great. Make sure to make a budget. P -p -p pog champ. Thank you, everybody, so much. It's incredible. Sorry, it says Lamau. I'll remind Lens of that. Hey. Now Shira says, I request the colorless mana symbol from Magic the Gathering as my role icon. You got it. Sarade, thank you for the reminder. I'm gonna need it. There's no way I'm gonna remember that. The Chaos Lab says, Jiff, clean that dirty bath. <laughs> In a jiffy. Rotbjorn says, the feeling of getting your first paycheck. Oh, it's so good. It really is. Alex says, thank you. Hey, thank you for going out into the world and doing stuff. But yes, please do make a budget just for, for all of our sanities. A budget is probably the most important thing you can do after getting a job. <laughs> just make sure you know where your money is going. Because at that point, you can make bad decisions and that's your choice. But if you make bad decisions on accident, that's so sad. So sad. The Chaos Lab says, don't blow it all at once. I mean, yeah. Rot Beyond, doing stuff in contrast to open source developers who do work for free blasphemy. <laughs> if you don't know what you want, don't get anything. That's such good advice. Because, like, that's pretty much me every day. I go, I have a lot of money to spend in the budget. I guess I should just... I don't, know, I don't have to like if I I could just go spend it, but you don't have to. You can also just go like, well, I don't know what to do. I'm just gonna lay in bed. Rob Bjorn says, but you want a split keyboard, new headphones, and ultra wide monitor. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Here's the thing: for those things, you just have to, like I said, you just have to budget. Because if you put down like fifty dollars a month towards those things, it actually happens really fast. As long as that 50 a month isn't coming out of, like, uh, your savings, right? Skytzars, it seems good. But yeah, thank you everybody so much for watching. This has been incredible. Be sure to check out all the links below. I have a YouTube. I have a Discord. I don't really have a Discord. We have a Discord community that we're all a part of. And it's a ton of fun, and I enjoy it. But yeah, if you if you enjoyed the stream, be sure to hit that follow button. I cannot believe we are at 759 followers. That is insanity. That's such a large amount of people. It blows my mind. Thank you. Seriously. Uh, if you enjoy this type of content, go to youtube.com slash L-E-N-S-R. That is youtube.com slash L-E-N-S-R. And uh, that's where all of my VODs are uploaded. I plan on doing YouTube videos soon after a computer upgrade, blah, blah, blah stuff like that. There's playlists for all of the compiler videos, all 63. There's some other stuff on Lenser OS and on the text editor, but not too much. But stay tuned for more. There's always more happening. And we, I'm planning on doing some more uh, diversification very soon here, where we will end up with a, uh, a, a few different types of content and video and kind of just pathways that this channel is going in so hopefully that works that works well because i'd love to make the most of this community in our time together but yeah you should do short form content on youtube i do want to if you have any suggestions let me know of what to make 
because I want to make like little, littler five, 10 minute videos that are like how to, how to use the basics of CMake. You know what I mean? That way you, you can just like build a C program without having to, having to die internally as most people do when they first learn how to build C programs. But yeah, just make like little tutorials and stuff. Sounds fun. And then also like data structure videos, like have a video talking about hash maps and why they're used, but the whole video is just me writing code for a hash map in C. And then like, here's why we do it this way. Here's another way you could do it. This is just this implementation. And then, you know what I mean? Create a little hash map in C in 10 minutes or 15 minutes. And it's like an uncut video still, like a live stream, but it's just like, 10 to 15 minutes of me just writing simple code and going through a data structure or something like that. So I, I have a few ideas, but be sure to let me know if you have any suggestions. And then we also might be doing some gaming here soon. Oh, some community gaming with you guys. So stay tuned, stay tuned. And uh, even more than that, there's more than that that I don't want to spoil yet, but I almost, I almost just said it, but <laughs> there's more that's coming soon as well that uh you should say definitely stay tuned for it. it's gonna get gonna get better rotburn i like content similar to ledu's latest video i don't know who that is unless you're talking about ludwig but i'll uh, i'll check it out i'll check it out thank you for that i appreciate it if uh anybody has any last questions be sure to ask them now but the intercept compiler now has a uh, modules i'm pretty sure that we can just merge this bad boy and uh that'll be a good end to the stream how does everybody feel about that Do, does does anybody remember that i said i shouldn't merge this i feel like we're good we have modules they're not done done but we have we have them right it's not uh the end of the world so if we merge it all our tests are passing at least all the ones that were passing beforehand. We just have some uh, basic stuff failing due to uh, old bugs and some semantics that I got to update in the language based on CodeGen. Seems doable though. So yeah, let's just merge this modules. Uh, Bippity boppity. Do one of those. Beautiful stuff. And uh, we did it. And then we'll just end on the, uh, the, the goodbye. Anyways, thank you everybody so much for watching. We now have modules in the Intercept compiler. If you are interested in this sort of stuff, writing compilers, low-level development, and even high-level development, honestly, there may be some, some web stuff happening. Anyway, be sure to check it out. I also have a blog or something like that, which is hosted on GitHub Pages. So you could check that out if you would prefer as well because there's posts i do there from time to time i'm working on like four different ones right now but i don't know when they'll come out but uh that's also a thing so be sure to check that out thank you everybody so much for watching sir Aid says ta-da thank you sir Aid, for being here you're an absolute legend just like local just like everybody here all of you are the reason i do this at all so thank you i hope you go on to have a fantastic day as hopefully i am about to and uh, yeah, currently it's Saturday afternoon. Whatever time it is for you, I don't know. But I will say, hopefully the rest of your day is fantastic. You get some sleep when you need it. And uh, be sure to drink water. Stay hydrated. Anyways, bye-bye all. Good night. I'll see you later. Love you. You ever drink Bailey's from a shoe? <laughs>